Hey guys, we're going to take some notes today on lesson 1-2, and we're going to talk about ratios. And believe it or not, you've actually talked about ratios before. Today's date is the 22nd. We've just called it something else, so let's see if you can figure out what I'm referring to. Okay, so let's get a definition. So a ratio... is a comparison of two quantities using division. Okay, so you got an idea of what else we've talked about really recently that uh, would meet that condition. Uh, if not, hopefully you'll see it in just a moment. So let's talk about ways to write ratios because we have different ways to do it. So let's say we have this picture. We've got some ovals. And we have some X's. Kind of like playing uh, tic-tac-toe, huh? OK. So we're going to be given a set of directions. And the order that they write things is the order we write our numbers. So it's going to say compare ovals to x's. Okay? So what's written first, ovals is going to go in front in our ratios and what's written second, which is our x's is going to be written in the second position. So we can talk about the values, ovals to x's, in words. And those words would be 3 to 4. So notice what I'm doing is I'm removing the words and I'm using the numbers, the amounts. So this would be considered words. Okay. Then I can also show it and I read it the same exact way, but using something called a colon. So that's three, and then the colon is the two dots, one above the other, four. So that's your colon method of saying three to four. And then the last way should be the one I was referring to earlier, the way that uh, we've been dealing with the idea of a ratio, and we're going to say 3 to 4 vertically. Yep, that's right. It's a fraction. Okay? So all three of these ways is how we can write a ratio, but often it's going to be the last way, and then there is a reminder, as is true with any fraction answers, we always need to simplify them. Always simplify fractions. Now remember what simplify means. It means to divide out any common uh, factors in the numerator and the denominator. It does not mean changing it to a mixed number. In fact, a mixed number would not be a ratio because by definition, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities. If you changed it into a mixed number, now you have three values. So that's why that one won't work. Okay, I'm going to go to my next slide, and we're going to talk about how to compare uh, ratios. So we'll have two different ratios. So ways to compare ratios.
voila. All right, so there's two major ways that we could do this. We can do a part to a part. Or we can do a whole to a whole. I mean, sorry, part to a whole. And again, you're probably scratching your head going, what is she talking about right now? So let me give you a picture. We have some circles. In fact, we have two circles. We have some triangles. Actually, we have three triangles. And then we have some rectangles. And actually, we have four of them. One, two, three, four. So let's talk about part to part. In fact, we'll do a couple of them. So what if I say, let's compare triangles to squares, or to rectangles. Eh, we'll say rectangles. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up the number of triangles. And I'm going to compare it vertically to the number of rectangles. Okay, so that's the most common way, and this is easiest for us to check to see if we can reduce. And I can tell I'm not going to be able to because the two numbers are just one off from each other. Now, it's perfectly acceptable to write it as 3 and then the word 2 and then the 4. Or with the colon, 3, and then the colon, and then the 4. Okay? These are all acceptable ways. All right? Fraction, though, a little bit more practical for our purposes at this point. Now, how do I read this? For every three triangles, there are four squares. Actually, let's color that. Let me do that again. Let's color code. For every three triangles, there are four rectangles. Okay. All right, let's try circles um, to squares, or rectangles. Okay. Now, we're going to see two circles and four rectangles. And what you should notice is that this is not a simplified uh, ratio. It's not a simplified fraction, so we are going to have to reduce it. To do that, we're going to divide out the common factor of two from each of them. What that's going to give me is a reduced version of 1 to 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. <clears throat> 4 divided by 2 is 2. And how we would read this one, I realize I forgot my quotation here. We would say for, hello, wrong 4, for every, and then we're going to say one circle, so we're going to give the reduced version always. There are two rectangles. So notice, again, we did not have... Um, sorry, I'm having trouble with my color placement here. 
we only did one part of the whole to one part of the whole. So we never did talk about all the shapes together. So let's talk about that under the part to whole side. So let's do triangles compared to all shapes. I think I'll do just draw lines under these. And so I count up and I have three triangles and all together I got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shapes. Okay, so nine is the sum of all shapes. Okay, but just like we had before, I can reduce 3 and 9 by a 3. So I have to do that before I can talk about it being in a ratio form. And I get 3 divided by 3 is 1, 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So remember, we have three ways to write these ratios. And even if I did do it... Um, with the words, it still would be 1 to 2, or 1 to 3, excuse me. So I'm using, again, the simplified version, or I could do it with the colon, and it would be 1 and then colon 3. Okay? So how would I read this? I would say, now my wording is going to change a little bit because I'm comparing a part to a whole, whereas before it was a part to part. So I'm going to say 1 out of 3. every 3 shapes. is a triangle. And we can actually put that in green, A, because that also means one, or is one out of every three shapes is a triangle. Okay. So that one represents a triangle. Oops, helps if I spell it correctly. Okay. So one out of every three shapes is a triangle. So the way I write the comparison of a part to whole is different than how I did it part to part, okay? All right, so I have an example for you, and I'm going to make it miraculously show up on the next side. So hold on. So how do we find ratios <clears throat> when they're written in uh, word problem format? So i got to figure out who's going to be first and who's going to be second. So write a ratio in simplest form that compares the number of sons. So that's going to be my first one, is the number of sons to the number of moons. So that's going to be my second one. So here's my second one, and this is my first one. So the order they write it is the order I want to do it. Then they want us to explain its meaning. So in other words, uh, what does that ratio actually mean? So we're going to have to remember if it's part to part or part to whole. <clears throat> so sometimes what's easier to do is to draw the picture that goes with this. So I'm going to give you a picture so we can count up the number of suns and the number of moons. So here's our suns. are going to be the nice pretty green things. One, two, 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 two. We've got one, two, this looks like weird bugs, three, four. And then we're going to have some moons, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? All right. Now, if I was going to talk about them all together, I'd be talking about 
moons and suns or all the objects. So, but here it talked about suns versus moons. So we're going to be doing a part to part. Okay, so the number of suns is going to get written first. And we have one, two, three, four. And we're going to compare that to the number of moons. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So what you should notice is that I can actually reduce these. They both have a 2 in common, since they're both even. And that's going to give me 2 over 3. So what we would say is for every two suns, I'm going to make this a little darker. Two suns. There are three moons. That's what I mean by I explain its meaning. What did this what does the two mean compared to the three? Okay? Next we have a pet store. <clears throat> Sold the animals listed in the table in one week. Write the ratio of cats to pets sold that week. Then explain its meaning. So I'm going to give you a little chart. We've got pet. And we have number sold. And we're going to talk about three different pets. We have bird, we have dog, and we have cat. Okay, and we were told there was 10 birds sold, 14 dogs, and 8 cats. Now this one says the ratio of cats to pets. Okay, so we need to figure out how many pets were sold all together. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the total amount of animals. So we have 12 and we have 30. So we have 32. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is take the number of cats, sorry I'm going to do the darker one, which is 8, and we're going to compare it. Oh, hold on, let me just write this again. This is part, which is the cats, to whole, okay, which are the pets. So we've got cats is one, pets is two. So we have eight cats per... 32 animals. And again, hopefully you can see that we need to simplify this. And we can actually divide by 8. They both have an 8 in common. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 32 divided by 8 is 4. So we're going to change the wording on this, remember? It says 1 out of every 4 pets sold. is a cat. Okay, so we take the two numbers together. One out of every four pets sold is a cat. All right, last one. Kitty wants to divide her 30 flowers into two groups so that the ratio is two to three. How many flowers are in each 
group. So what we're going to do is come up with a bar diagram might help us with this situation. Now you might see something that you like to use better, that's fine. But I'm going to do a little bit of a bar diagram. And to get our ratio, we're going to have to get this idea of two groups. Oh wait, let's not do it that way. Let's, we have two to three. So what I'm going to do is to create a bar of two okay, and a bar of three. And she says she wants to divide her flowers into two groups so that the ratio is two to three. How many flowers are in each group? So you got to ask yourself, how many bars did I come up with? And if you look at it, you're going to say, wait a second, I see five bars. And we want to do 30 flowers. So how many flowers would be in each bar? If I have five of them and there's 30 flowers, well, we should know that five goes into 36 times. Okay. So what that lets me conclude is that in this first group, there's going to be 12 flowers. And in the second group, 6 plus 6 plus 6 gives us 18. Okay. So what we can say... is there were, or there are, 12 flowers in one group, I'm sorry, let me change my color, and 18 flowers, in the other group. All right, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Good luck.